welcome back to Yarnatopia. It is a beautiful Friday early morning in the middle of nowhere, Alabama. And I just want to come out here, sit down and drink some coffee with you all. Talk about the things I've been working on. Talking about the things I've completed. Talk about why my shed looks like a hot mess. Because as you can see, it does. And share with you my version of Vlogmas. So I hope you enjoy this video. Welcome to my version of Vlogus. Now I've never done a Vlogus and I'm gonna be honest I'm probably gonna like not say it right several times because for some reason I keep wanting to say Vlogmas which is the vlog type thing that I love doing in the month of December and usually I do a Vlogtober because it's October my birthday month and my most favorite time of the year. So this is my first time ever doing a vlogmas, see I just said it, vlogs, which is basically the same thing but in the month of August, which is also a fun time of year because we start back to school as a homeschool family. And that has its own adventures in itself. But I've been pretty busy out here and I've actually been really busy playing with my yarn. You'll have to excuse me, my allergies are going crazy and there's a small twitch in this eye. So if you see it, I'm fine. <laughs> Just to let you know that it's got some muscle spasms happening this morning. It is a lovely Alabama day. It's going to be pretty hot. I think next week it's supposed to be like 10 degrees lower, which I'm so excited and if you also notice, I'm out here in the shed and I'm not sweating because my mini split was installed and it is absolutely glorious. It's actually running right now and all you can hear is the ceiling fan. It's amazing. But let's go ahead and dive into my finished objects because I actually have a couple. I'm going to save the semi big one for last and we're going to talk about two BB ones. So you may have seen where I put up a post on my community tab on Sunday of a photo. I used to do this thing all the time called Scrappy Sunday. And Scrappy Sunday is just where I come home after church, I sit down and I grab a scrappy project to work on. It can be any kind of scrappy project, knitting or crochet. I can work on my mini socks from my garland or make some ornaments, just anything utilizing the scraps that I have in my shed. And I do have my scraps sorted in a way that makes this very easy for me to work on. So all of my acrylic scraps are together here and they are in a color coordinated little array of Roy G. Biv. And then on the other side of the room is my fingering weight yarn, except for the ones that I've already got pulled that only have five to 10 gram and mini mini skeins. All of my worsted and DK natural fiber scraps are kept in the bins at the bottom of the bookcase. But for my scrappy Sunday, last week I pulled out my cozy memories blanket. This kind of lives in this chica bag this is an older company they've been around for ever <laughs> it feels like since i've been knitting and crocheting since 2013 i know i've seen their products but i love this bag because it's a big bucket bag it has one huge handle and it has a zip or not zip it has a pull closure and I love that it has the little window, but this is what I'm keeping my actual blanket in. All of the yarn for this blanket, though, is being kept in one of my African market baskets. I have a bunch of these. I bought a bunch when the local yarn store sold them, and then I've just kind of collected them over the years. I love these bags because where I, I, when I buy them, I make sure they're companies who pay their workers fair wages. And you're basically supporting a good cause and you're still getting a really nice handmade storage thing. And I keep all my baskets hanging on the back side of my closet so I can grab them when I need them. But this is my cozy memories blanket and it is slowly growing. I've been knitting on this thing since the dawn of time, I think since 2015. But this is only scraps of yarn, fingering weight yarn or sock yarn that I've used over the years. I am making mine so that the decreases form diamonds 
and I just love how it looks. So for this, on Sunday, I finished this square. This is some, who is this dyer? This is Desert Vista Dye Works. I don't know the colorway name because it was scraps that was sent to me. It's mostly all sock yarns that I have personally used in projects over the years. There are yarns that come from other viewers or from friends who send me to put in this. And so what I do is when I make my squares, I number them on the Ravelry page. I know who sent me a yarn, then I will put that and tag that person in that line with that photo so they can be part of my memories. This color right here is Kim Dye Yarn. This is in the colorway. I can't remember. I'll have to put it right here. This is actually in two shawls. This is in a shawl that I'm currently, well, I'm not really currently, it's, it's in a whip. We'll put it that way that I'm doing from the Romy Hill mystery and it along from like two or three years ago that I really need to finish. And it's also in my Stephen West shawography. But I love both of those. And so that is what I did this past Sunday. Now, will I be working on this again this Sunday? I don't know. I may choose a different scrap project to work on or I may put on another two squares of this. I haven't decided yet. Now my other completed object is something that I talked about before. I don't hate it, but I definitely am not in love with him. So this is the squid pattern that I shared on my community tab. If you're new to my channel, every Monday, I say every Monday, pretty much almost every Monday I share a community post that has at least four to six free patterns on there. There's always a balance of knitting and crochet because that's what I do. I knit and I crochet and I like to use those to hopefully inspire you to get crafting that week. But a couple weeks ago I put up a pattern up or a um, post up that had sea creatures because it was shark week or shark month whatever they call it these days and so I wanted to make something oceanic <laughs> oceanesque and so I chose to make the squid that I shared and so this is Takeo the squid it's not horrible I I don't really love it though so the problem with my squid is number one the tension is way off and that is because I really needed to use a seven needle for this a us7 and i didn't have any dpns that were a us7 i don't know where my 7 dpn went i don't know if i loaned it out to somebody in the past but needless to say i did not have one so i used a us8 which is a six millimeter and obviously it was too big and i had no business using it i tried to knit tight but I'm a very relaxed knitter so that is pretty much impossible for me I just couldn't do it and I probably should have went down to a six but it would have been like iron clad because this is some I love this yarn which is an acrylic yarn there's really no give to it and when I was doing a little swatch on a six it was just like cement and it wouldn't have any kind of form so I stuck it out with the eight and I finished the project do I love it no because he is he's got some tension issues especially where there was increases and decreases like it's just the yarn just doesn't it, it yeah there's that he's not horrible in any way possible this is just not not my normal degree of knitting and so I think that's why I don't like it. I think I'm probably harder on myself than, than most people are. I did do the pattern just a little bit different than what it was written. First of all I didn't make all my tentacles the same length because squids don't have all the same length tentacles. I wanted him to have some variety and I wanted him to have like motion in his tentacles so I did some extra decreases and increases to kind of give that. And then I did the eyes differently in the pattern. It has you make the top lid and then the bottom lid and then so so seam them together and put them on the squid's face. And as we've talked about before, I hate seaming. So I do whatever I can to avoid that. So what I did was stick my little needle in there, pick up the stitches and literally just knit his eyeballs on. I don't like that. So I'm trying to 
just pick up some random stitches around his eyeball and then knit them on. So we shall see how that goes. I knit the top lid and then I knit the bottom lid and then I use the tails to pull them together. So it looks like that and I think it turned out pretty good. I used those yellow eyeballs that I showed you a while back and they kind of give him a mean squiddy look but I don't know. I have mixed emotions about him. I don't hate him. I just don't love him. It's just... I know I could have done better on him. And <laughs> I know my knitting would have looked a lot better on him. I, I really thought, I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't like using a needle ever over a US 7. Like they just feel so big and clunky to me that I even knit looser. And it's just so frustrating. I just don't like knitting with big yarn. But I don't know. I don't hate him, but I don't love him. He's going to sit on a shelf somewhere, so he'll be fine. He's going to live in here. And live out his days in Yarnotopia. Knitting really relaxes me. I like crochet, but I just really love knitting. And so you're gonna be seeing a lot more of that on this channel because I gotta get back to the knitting. That's where my heart is. Okay, I had to go in for more coffee and then grab day and banana clip. So as far as what I'm working on, besides obviously what I just finished, I've been knitting on my socks. Now this is a whip that I've had pretty much for forever it seems like, but I forgot that there's money. <laughs> there's money in the back. I remember sticking that in there. Um, but I have been working on these. So we went to a local water park with our church youth and I put in the heels on the way there and then I put the other heel in there. So I did show these a lots of love since we last spoke. So this is one of them and you can see there is my fish lips kiss heel. I really love making my socks on deep pants. I don't really love knitting socks in general though because they take forever because I have a huge foot <laughs> and they take a long time to knit. Where's my sock ruler? So looking to show you how much knitting I have to do. You put this in and then you go up to here and that's where you put this in your toe and then you go up to here and that's where you stop to knit your heel. So I have to knit all the way up to about nine and a half inches for it to fit my foot before I can start putting in my heel, which is almost the entire sock ruler. <laughs> it's kind of sad, but that's what I do. And so you slide it in like this and then that's where you knit <laughs> before you begin your heel. And that's what I do. I go all the way to nine and a half and then I put it in my heel. So that's my first heel. And then on the second one, I've got the heel done and I've already started working the leg. And I like to fold mine over and I will knit all the way down to here before I actually start my ribbing so that my ribbing would cover where my toes were if they were folded over. And that's just how, if I'm gonna knit socks, that's just how I like to knit my socks. I do want to knit some shorties and see how I like them because typically that's all I wear is shorty socks in general but not handmade ones because I've never knit them and this is probably my I'd say 10th pair of socks to knit and I don't think I've ever worn I think I may have worn them three times so three socks out of all of the ones I've knit but I do enjoy the process of knitting them and I know one day when I get older I'm going to appreciate having these warm socks to put on my feet Right now, I'm just always hot anyways, and I just prefer little cottony socks to wear around, but who knows? <laughs> I do always like to have a sock going anyway, so when I get these completely done, I will probably start another pair of socks. My other work in progress has been on my poncho, and I am making the, what is this thing called? Why can I never remember the name of the stupid poncho? Annie. I should be able to remember Annie. So this is Annie. This is what I'm currently making. And I am using some Lands de Nord Poma Tweed, a luxury line. This 
I've talked about this yarn before. There are several videos that I talk about this project. I'll link them down below in case you're interested. It is a 94% wool and 6% bicose. I love the yarn. There's no question about it. It's very lofty and light. It's very nice for my area. But what I don't love about this yarn is on the website it lists as a four. So when I got this and I was project planning, I was planning for this to be a more of a worsted weight yarn. And it does have a halo, which I guess technically halos account for some of the fluff. This is the swatch that I did. This was on a, I think an H hook. And it's very, it's very, it's so soft. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. It's very, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Drapey. Drapey is the word. It's very drapey. It's very nice. But I felt like too much for what I was wanting. So I went down to a G hook. But I put a stitch marker in here to show you what I've all done. Let me undo this so you can see. This is the progress keeper that I put in. This is where I started on August the 1st. I wanted to start tracking this for a vlogus. So this is how much I've done. Since then, on top of knitting on my socks and making those squares on Sunday. So I was down here and I've done all this. And basically I'm just making a ginormous rectangle and then I will piece it together, sew it together, and then pick up and do the neckband and then do the bottom part of the poncho. I think it's going to be really, really pretty. I think it's going to be really cute with one of my solid dresses I like to wear. It's so comfortable and soft. I mean, this yarn is so nice. It really is. And I love the blips of color. You can kind of see them, but there are these tweety bits of joy in different colors with this yarn. And I like it. I like it a lot. So I've been trying to pull my yarn and pull all the lighter colors together and kind of do like a an ombre effect with it. You can kind of see it starts lighter. There's some places where there's some darker, but I'm trying to save the darkest for around my neck and hopefully the bottom trim. I'm thinking I'm going to have plenty of yarn. I don't know. I don't crochet often enough to really know. And I don't, this is the first time I've ever crocheted a garment besides this cowl. So I can't say that I have a lot of experience in that, but I'm still doing it. <laughs> And I'm just going to wing it as I go. If I can't make the neckline as big as I want to, then that's fine. Or I, I might have to shorten how much of the bottom trim I do. I don't know. We shall see. But these are the hooks. This is the, the liking hook set. This is the Umber color, U-M-B-E-R. And they're this kind of just really natural, pretty wood. Look how pretty. I love that they're different shades, but they're so smooth and they feel so nice in your hand. And then I talk about this case in another video, so I'm not going to go over it all the way. You can check out that if you want to, but I don't want to bore you, but I do love these crochet hooks. Now let's talk about the room because it's a hot mess. I've been talking about getting my mini split, it seems like, for years now. I've also been talking about getting rid of the plastic bins that were under the windows, and I have completed both of those things in here since the first, and I'm loving it. Originally, I was holding out for Ikea to get the bookcases that go under the window, but Ikea never has gotten everything in stock because I needed four of those and I need one more of the black bookcases to go right here, the skinny billies, and they're just never all in stock at the same time. And it's a two and a half hour drive for me, so I'm not just going to drive to Ikea multiple times and get pieces of furniture. It's not going to happen. I got tired of seeing the drawers, so I decided to go to Target and get some of theirs. And I got the little cubes from Target. They were on sale. So I think they're a regular $30 or $35. But but I wound up saving a lot of money by doing it that way. Not to mention the gas for travel. I still plan on getting that one bookcase for that corner from Ikea. If they ever have it in stock, I will just immediately go as soon as I get that it's back in stock email and buy that. And be done with that. I love how it turned out. I love that all my yarn is out now and I could see it. 
And for those who worry about yarn having it out, I have my yarn or have had my yarn on open bookcases like this for over 10 years without zero issues. I do live in Alabama. I think our humidity, I don't know, usually moss and stuff like humid, dark places, but I always have mine in light rooms with air conditioning. And I always move my yarn around. So like right now it's the 1st of August and in August and in January is when I take everything off the bookcases, dust everything, move them around and put them back. And I never had issues. You have to think that, you know, yarn is kept in yarn stores the same way for years. You just really have to make sure you kept it, keep it touched and keep it clean. And then you shouldn't have any issues with moss. Although some states I think are more and geological locations are more out to have those kind of pests in other places. But I've never had any issues. And so that's how I just keep my yarn. As far as the rest of the room, you may have noticed that the desk is missing. I decided yesterday that I was going to start redoing that desk. <laughs> so I got that desk several years ago from Target and it was on clearance. I think I paid $45 for that desk. It's a really great desk. I love it. It's very sturdy. But I wasn't loving the red and it just was so dark back there. Took out the drawers, wiped it down, cleaned it, and I began sanding. My original goal was to sand it so that it is all natural wood because as you can see I have a lot of natural wood in here and I love the look of a natural wood. Upon sanding that desk the legs are wood but the top is layered veneer. So once I started sanding it you know I noticed that and you can't really sand that all the way because it's going to mess it up. And it's not even like a good veneer it's just like an uber thin piece of paper-ish veneer kind of stuff so there's really no way to have that a natural wood color so I'm gonna have to paint the top of that desk I'm deciding if I want to leave the legs a natural color I kind of have this weird desire to paint them like a gold color because I do have a lot of gold things out here as an accent and that way it'll you know light will bounce off of it and it'll help brighten up the area and then doing the top like a teal color or turquoise like this color I think that would be super fun and bright and cheery so that's kind of what I'm angling angling that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing and then spray painting the hardware so it's also that gold color to match all the other golds and to be honest that, that might be what I do or I may just leave the legs natural and just do that to the top and then put that gold on the hardware but I had to stop sanding. I can only sand for so long with these metal plates in my arms. You can see my scars. There's because they just start cramping. And so I'm not even going to be able to sand today. I just have to take a day to rest. And then I can hopefully sand some more in the morning. And next week when it's going to be a lot cooler here in Alabama, it'll be a great time to do it. I don't know why I started that yesterday. It was way too hot. I had no business out there sanding 7.30 till 2.30 in the afternoon no business and that red paint is a pain to get off and there are some places where I cannot get my electric sander so I'm having to sand it by hand and that's what's taking so long but it's gonna be worth it and that's all that matters also out here we installed the mini split you can see it right there I did put it in the middle of the room in the process of installing the mini split which my husband has done an amazing job by the way he is such a sweetheart <laughs> he had his airpods in when he was putting it the um, template on the wall and getting the bolts screwed into the two by fours and he had to cut a hole that the wiring has to go through to the outside and it has to be angled so that way it can drain because my mini split also has a dehumidifier but when he was drilling that hole because there wasn't really any air in here during that time I had the ceiling fan on him and he had his AirPods in and did not even hear the ceiling fan because it's pretty quiet. It's going right now and you cannot hear it at all. And he started drilling and he came over to her while I was outside sanding and he was like, you may want to go clean up. And I was like, okay. So I come in here and when he was drilling this ginormous circle 
all of that sheetrock dust went everywhere because of the ceiling fan. I mean, it, it it's everywhere. So yesterday I started cleaning. I started at one end of the shed and I have to wipe down literally every single thing that's in here. So all the little houses above where my gnomes are, I had to wipe them down, all the window sills, everything. And now I'm at the point where I'm at the door across. So you can even see, I don't know if you can see, like right, it's even on my mannequin there and on her arm. So I have to clean her. All those bookcases have sheetrock dust on them. So that's what I'm doing the rest of the day. I'm cleaning. Lots of lots of cleaning, but I've only dusted once since I put everything out here or started putting stuff out here in November, no, December of last year. So it doesn't get really dusty at all, which is amazing. Other things that happened since the 1st of August, since this is a vlogist, is I went to a little, I don't even know what you call this place. It's it's a little family-owned store. They sell a lot of outdoor yard ornaments is that what you call them these days i don't know but i walked around looking around trying to find the perfect pots for when i do get my front porch done and just what other kind of fun things i honestly just wanted to walk around outside it was a really pretty morning i just got my blood work done for my thyroid and i wasn't ready to go buy groceries just yet so I went there, walked around. The people are so nice there. I love it. I did see a couple of things I liked. And so hopefully whenever I get my porch, they will still have them and I can go purchase them for my front porch. But that is all that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my version of Vlogist. And that's kind of how this is going to be for me for this month, sharing with you on a weekly basis the things that are going on behind the scenes and what's going on in my knitting and crochet, anything that I finish, and just bits and pieces of adventures that I have had. And I hope that they make you smile, bring you joy, and keep you company while you're knitting and crocheting on your own projects. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.